give up. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mother. Hello, Ernestine. Hello, Mother. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mother. Hello, Martha. Hello, Mother. Hello, Bill. Hello, Mother. Hello, Lillian. Hello, Mother. Hello, Fred. Hello, Mother. Hello, Dan. Hello, Mother. Hello, Jack. Where were you, Mother? I'm sorry, dear, but I ran into someone from the engineering department, and he insisted that I... Oh, hi, Mom. Hello, Bob, dear. Where's Jane? In front, fifth from the left. The baby. The baby's being graduated. The last one. I can hardly believe it. What was that, Mother? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the class valedictorian, Miss Susan Whittaker, who will speak to you on our generation and the challenge of the future. President Dickerson, members of the faculty, honored guests and fellow students, this is an important day in our lives. Yes, it is an important day. And there were times, Frank, when I thought this day would never come. But it had to. For in my mind, I had promised you that the job would be done. I remember we had just sold the house in Montclair, the house that you had bought for us, and had moved to one not quite so spacious and not quite so full of memories. I was packing to go away on a lecture trip, for I was determined that I would keep on with your work. I had to. I get such an easy job. Fourteen rooms to clean, 36 meals to get every day. If I hadn't quit school in the second grade, I could tell you how many meals that would make a week. 252. Are we having hash again? That ain't hash. That's lamb rangoon. What on earth is lamb rangoon? It's a receipt. Been in my family for generations. It smells like it. Lazy. I want to be lazy. Hello, Cousin Leora. Hello, Martha. And, uh, and Jane, isn't it? Anne here and Ernestine there, Cousin Leora. Oh, how stupid of me. I always get you turned round. <laughs> well, there's so many of us. Yes. Isn't it heartbreaking? Hmm. How are things? Just fine. I'll tell Mother you're here. Thank you, dear. I'll tell her, too. <laughs> Every time she comes here, she makes me feel like a charity case. Shh. She's here. I hope she does. She'll stay away and mind her own business. Good afternoon, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, Snoop. Did you say something? No, I just said I'd swoop in here later. Will you close the doors, Tom, please? Hello, Leora. Hello, Lily. 
Hey, what's she want? It's very simple. I talked to your brother Bill and to Aunt Margaret, and each of us has agreed to take two of the younger children. I wouldn't think of it. Why, it's outrageous. Do you dare? I told you you'd fly off the handle. Now you listen to me, Lily Gilbreth, and try and be a little sensible about this. I know that nearly all of Frank's life insurance money has been spent already. That's true, isn't it? Yes. Well, I have that whole big house up in Westchester, and it's empty. Now, if I'm willing to take in two of your children and give them some of the advantages and care that you can't possibly give them, why should you feel that I'm being outrageous? I know it's hard to give them up. That's only natural. But you're not thinking of the children when you feel like that. You're thinking only of yourself. I never thought I was being selfish. Oh, I don't think you mean to be. But that's the way it works out for them. Suppose something were to happen to one of them while you're away. Oh, Leora, you can't just shut your eyes, Lily. You've got to think of things like that. You see, I'm right. I'll telephone Bill and Aunt Margaret and tell them you've agreed. No. No, I have to think about it. Call me tonight. Very well, Lily. Oh, uh, Leora, would you like to stay for dinner? Oh, thank you very much, but I uh, think not. There are enough hungry birds to feed without me. Well, hello, children. Oh, you little darling. How would you like to come and live with me? No. Call me later, Leo. Uh, I will, Lily. Goodbye. Goodbye, children. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm sure they'll lead to something. No, Leora. I'm afraid once we broke up the family, we... So you're going away and leaving those children to the mercy of the heat and the Jersey mosquito. No, I'm sending them to Nantucket. <laughs> no, not by themselves. Tom will go with them. I'm sorry, Leora. I... I have to do what I think is best. Thank you and goodbye. Oh, Mother, oh, Mother. Mother. When did you decide on Nantucket? I don't know. It just came to me. We have that house there. We haven't been able to sell it. We've gone there every other year. Why not this one? Why not? Now you will be careful, won't you? We'll be so good, nobody will know us. Don't you worry about a thing, Mother. I'll try not to. Oh, everything will be fine, Mother. I'll take your place. Martha can have charge of the money and the meals. Frank will take care of the boys, and Ernestine will take care of the girls. And we'll all take care of Tom. <laughs> Ain't they coming with us, too? No, no, it'd be too crowded. How can you say that? Eight valises, a dog, a cat, a canary bird, nine people. Nine people? We're only supposed to be seven. One, two, three. Mickey and Peter Shermerhorn, you two get right out of this taxi. But Jackie said we could go. Well, I'm sorry, you can't. <coughs> Come on, out of there, quickly. Hurry now. We've got enough trouble without taking the neighbor's children, too. Aren't you going in? Later, Frank. Later. Oh, I get it. Look at that poor sucker standing there. Does he know what plans you have in store for him? Please, go away. Oh, that poor Morton. Oh. Morton has just noticed him. Has he? What plans do you have in mind for him? None. Absolutely none. He looks exactly the same as he did last year. I thought you found him rather attractive last year. 
I did, but I'm a year older and women mature so much earlier than men. He's a baby, really he is. I don't think he's a baby. Want him? Want him? He's an Amherst man. Well, here he comes. Just catch the ball when I throw it to you. Hello, Anne. Well, hello, Morton. You remember my sister, Ernestine? Oh, yes, hello. Anne, how about going in for our swims? The water's keen. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, come on. A race is a pier. Well, I just don't feel like it, Morton. But if it's a race you want, Ernestine... Hi, I'm... everybody. Who wants to race me out to the pier? I do. So well, come on, then. Say, you're not the only one who's gotten mature this year. Oh, Martha's just an infant. She doesn't look like an infant in that. Well, thanks for turning Morton over to me. Believe me, Ernestine, you haven't lost a thing. I know. How can you lose something you never had? Fight, 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 fight,
Your younger sister got engaged before you did. Hey, are you engaged to him? Yes. Really? Yes. Well, then get him to slip you a couple of steaks on right by accident, will you? Oh, honestly, all anybody in this family ever thinks about is food. It's the next best thing to eating it. Martha, couldn't you just squeeze some hamburgers out of that budget? The budget only calls for meat for the little ones. We're all full grown. Well, I'm not. My best growing years are ahead of me. All right. Tonight, you're going to get some meat. Meat? Did I hear right? I can't believe it. I said we're going to have meat tonight. To celebrate Ernestine's engagement, we're going to have a barbecue. Oh, boy, that fire looks great. When do we start cooking? As soon as the meat comes. Haven't you got it with you? It'll be a lot. Well, what do you have to do, shoot it? I told you it was clams. We don't have to shoot it, and we don't have to dig for it. Just leave everything to me. <laughs> it's the pot now. They're going to have a barbecue, too. Well, isn't it a good thing we got here first? Martha, is this the meat you said would be along? You can't. No, watch me. You can't possibly. You don't have to say if you don't want to. Hello. Hello, Colonel. Were you planning a barbecue, too? Why, yes, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Go gosh, we didn't know it. Why don't you take over the fire? We'll just go back to the house and boil ours on the stove. Oh, I wouldn't hear of it. We insist, don't we? After all, you're planning a party, and, well, we're only family. Oh, we have Frankfurters anyway. Come on, everybody. Let's get our things together and get out of Colonel Putnam's way. Oh. Why, you'll do nothing of the kind. You're going to stay right here with us. We'll combine forces. That's what we'll do. Oh, no. I insist. We have more than enough stakes for everyone, haven't we, Emily? Oh, yes, Colonel. Enough for a regiment. Take a look. <laughs> so... Well, it, it isn't up to me. It's up to Anne. She's the oldest. Uh, uh, well, if you don't stay, I won't enjoy a mouthful of food. Well, we couldn't do that to you, Colonel. Could we? Absolutely not. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Japanese Sandman. Here's the Japanese Sandman. Bodhi Odo. Sneaking on with the Jew. Do, 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 do. Just an old second hand man. What does he do? He'll buy your old egg from you. Bap, 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 bap. He will take every sorrow take away. of the day that is through. Doodly do, do, do. And he'll give you tomorrow. No start of tomorrow, just, just start life on new, start life on new. Then you'll be a bit older. Body old. In the dawn when you wake. Things be Jake when you awake. And you'll be a bit bolder. Bolder and bolder. With the new day you make. You'll be making no mistake. He a Japanese on man. Trade in silver for gold. Come on, Martha, dance. Just yes, an old second hand man. Come on and dance. New days for old. Dance, dance, dance. <laughs>
didn't think we could do it. Look, there's Mother! 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 What is this? Welcome back, Mrs. Gilbert. Welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Hello, Mrs. Gilbert. I'm Colonel Putnam, one of your new neighbors. How do you do? Won't you join us? Why, yes, thank you, Colonel. Come and get it, everybody. Oh, oh the cow on the stage. Come on. Did you see the wonderful thing? Is something wrong, Mother? No, why? We weren't expecting you till the middle of August. I know, dear. I just did everything very quickly. Oh. Isn't this steak delicious? Seconds, anyone? Uh, y yes, please. Just a song at twilight When the lights are Beautiful night. Seems such a shame. What does, Mother? Well, Anne, you might as well know. We'll all have to go back to Montclair. I stopped in to see the real estate agent. He thinks he can rent the house here for the rest of the summer. Then, then the trip didn't go very well. No. Two of the lectures were canceled, and I couldn't get any of the others to renew your father's old contract. Oh, but you and Father always worked so closely together. I guess he was the one they were really hiring. They think of me as someone who just tagged along. What, what will you do, Mother? I don't know, Anne, but when we get back to Montclair, I'll write letters to every firm I can think of and hope that someone will condescend to hire a lady engineer. Mother, I don't have to go back to college. I can skip a year. I can stay home and get a job and help. Well, we won't make any drastic plans until we have to. Mother! Mother! Yes, Frank? Don't say anything to the others. I'll tell them in the morning. Mother, Ernestine's no good at the harmony. Would you take it? Well, I'll try. <laughs> problem of making ends meet. We scrimped and cut corners with one purpose in mind, to keep the family together. There you are. Thanks, Albert. Thank you, Doctor. Come in again. Uh, if you don't mind, I think my spaghetti are ready. I'll take my lunch while the business is slow. Well, you go ahead, Albert. Enjoy. Thank you, Doctor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Where's the other barber? Oh, he... Uh, he just went out to lunch. Oh. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I, I had hoped to talk to Albert because I... Dan, Fred! Stop it, my friend. Because we've been coming here for so many years and he knows us so well. Whatever Albert can do for you, I'd be glad to do. And more. Well, these are my brothers and sisters. All of them? No, there are four more. And since we're such a large family and we need so many haircuts a month, don't you think we ought to get a special rate? I think you should get a medal. <laughs> I mean, large families are the backbone of the nation. That's not the point. The point is, do you think you can give us a special prize? Well, that's a lot of hair. Uh, how do I know these are really your brothers and sisters? How do I know you just didn't collect them on the street and you're getting a rebate from their mothers and fathers? Well, I never. Why, everyone in Montclair knows the Gilbert family. Uh, Gilbert? How, how do you spell that? B-R-E-T-H. Mm -hmm. First name? I don't need a haircut. Yes, I noticed that. You look fine. You should always wear it that way. You don't sound like a barber to me. Ah, Miss Gilbert. Glad to see you back. You still here, Dr. Grayson? 
Doctor? Are, are you a doctor? Don't feel bad, Miss Gilbreth. I'm usually taken for a busboy or a street cleaner. Do you think a mustache would help? No. Neither do I. <laughs> Goodbye, Gilbreth. Bye! Well. Oh, damn. Hey, come on! Any rags, any bones, any bottles today. Any rags, any bones, any bottles today. Funny old rag picture coming this way. Any rags, any bones, any bottles today. Rags. Captain, Captain, just watch. The same old story in the same old way. Rags. Rags. Any rags, any bones, any bottles today. want to drink it. Mother, do you know how much root beer this family drinks in the summertime? No. Three cases a week. A total cash expenditure of $3.60 every week. It's astonishing. Oh, Mrs. Gilbert. Yes, sir. Uh, man here to see you. Drove up in the mighty fine car, waiting in the sitting room. Thank you. Bill, when you empty that, send up last week's batch. And remember, don't touch the ones with chalk marks. They're tall. Okay. What flavor did Tom make? I don't know, but I saw him put some yeast and some prunes and sugar in them. Ooh, must taste terrible. How do you do? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Gilbert? That your husband? Yes. Uh, tell me he was quite a guy. Yes, he was quite a guy. Uh, I was just down here visiting the Wilson Tool and Dye outfit. Wilson has got a couple of boys running the plant for him, and they're just great. They should be. My husband trained them. I know that. That's why I'm here. I got a great opportunity for fellows like that. Do you know anybody that you'd like to do a favor for? I could use a couple of good men. I could use a half a dozen. Uh, well, Mr. Uh... Harper, Sam Harper. Of Harper Electric? That's right. Well, Mr. Harper, my husband trained many men, but they all have very good jobs. Yeah, I bet they wouldn't give them up, either. <laughs> I tried to steal those two fellows from Wilson, but uh, nothing doing. Well, they wouldn't be exactly right for you anyway. No? No, we trained Evans and Boyd for Wilson Tool and Die. They wouldn't be right for Harper Electric. We? Yes. My husband and I always work together. Is that so? I'm an engineer, too. Uh, women are creeping in all over. What? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Do you suppose you... No, that'd never work. It certainly would. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't what? What you're thinking about. I'll train some men for you. Where? Right here. My husband and I trained all the others at home. Oh, it'd never work. No man who's worth anything would ever take instructions from a woman. I know I wouldn't. That is a very narrow-minded, bigoted point of view, Mr. Harper. Well, maybe it is, but it's my opinion, and I'm stuck with it. Yes, you are. And if it's any comfort to you, that opinion I have discovered is shared by most of the big industrial firms in the country. 
But there's no reason to get excited, Mrs. Gilbert. Can I help it? Good if day, I... Mr. Harper. Are you teaching school here? No, these are my own children. Children, this is Mr. Harper. Hi. How do you do? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And this is another one. And this is Mr. Harper. Yes. How do you do, Mr. Harper? And you think you can train some executives here too, eh? That is my opinion, Mr. Harper, and apparently I'm stuck with it. Yes, well, goodbye. Bye. Stupid, arrogant, hard-headed, ignorant. What is it? Oh, Anne, it would have been absolutely perfect. I could have earned enough money right here at home, enough to take care of all of us, send you back to college, and I wouldn't have had to leave the children. It's absolutely maddening to come up against that stupid male conceit. I don't understand. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. I'm, it's just that I'm at my wit's end. Oh, Mother, I know you'll get something. Some of those letters you wrote. Oh, I've already had enough answers to know what they'll all say. Sorry. We have nothing for you. It makes me so furious. For a moment there, I thought all my troubles were at an end. <gasps> Mercy, Maud, what's that? In the, in the cellar. He must be the furnace. <laughs> We've got to get the children out of the house before it blows up. The house ain't blowing up, ma'am. Ain't nothing to get excited about. What is it? It's just the children's root beer. That's all. That's all. Oh, thank heaven. Yes, don't you worry about a thing. I'll go down and clean it all up. Children's root beer? Tom? Just a minute. This root beer doesn't explode. Huh? Alcohol. Alcohol? You smell alcohol, Mrs. Gilbert? Smell it. If I lit a match, the whole house would explode. What have you been making down there? Me? Not the children, you. Well, it's an old family receipt, you might say. You take some prunes and yeast and add a little sugar just to change the flavor, and it's just possible that with this receipt you might create something that has a chemical reaction like alcohol and smells like alcohol. And tastes like alcohol. Yeah, uh, no. Step in here, Tom. Tom, this is outrageous. I know you've been with us many years, but this is the last straw. I warned you time and time again, but now you leave me no alternative. You'll simply have to go. I had to do it. I had to let him go. Not oh, Tom. We couldn't get along without Tom. I know how you feel about him, but you're just going to have to get along without him. Well, come on, everybody. Let's go on down there and clean up the mess. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Gilbert. Yes? Uh, I think you ought to let me come in because I've changed my mind. You have? Yes. Oh, come in. Come in. Thank you. Uh, you can have your school. I'll uh, send you two men. Oh, but two men won't do. What? It won't really pay me to start a school unless I have at least six pupils. And besides, it would be inefficient for me to teach two when I can teach six at the same time. And you said yourself you could use half a dozen, so it'd be just as inefficient for you yes, to keep it. Yes, all right, all right. I'll tell you what, you phone me tomorrow and we'll work out the details, huh? Eh? Oh, thank you, Mr. Harper. I'll welcome. do that. <laughs> what the devil is that? Oh, uh, the children have a laboratory downstairs, and I expect they're fooling around with chemicals. Chemicals? <laughs> smells like alcohol to me. Mr. Harper, alcohol is a chemical. Yes. So it is. <laughs> Good afternoon. Goodbye. I'll call you tomorrow. Mrs. Gilbert, I know you're a very busy woman with your scientific management and engineering, so I wrote myself out a character reference. If you'll sign it, I'll be very much obliged to you. You wrote yourself a reference? Well, I learned something in the years I've been here. I'll read it to you. To who it may concern. 
Thomas George Bracken has worked for me for 20 years as cook, cleaning man, gardener, furnace man, children's nurse, and butler. After 20 years of loyalty and devotion, I was forced to fire him against my will because of certain financial reverses which he was not responsible for. I most certainly will not sign that. Well, I know it stretches the truth a bit, but if we tell the truth, who's going to give me a job? Quitting, just when I need you most. But, Mrs. Gilbert, you... A fine time you picked. Just when I'm getting my school started and you know I can't get along without you, you decide to walk out after 20 years. I never heard of anyone so ungrateful. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That's better. Ah, uh, Mrs. Gilbert, the last one. By Thanksgiving, the school was fully launched. Sam Harper more than kept his word. He not only sent four men himself, but he contrived to have the biggest department store in New York send two more, and persuaded Kincaid Rubber to send an additional two. We must remember that of all the factors involved in industrial management, the most important is the human being. Well, in view of the fact that tomorrow is Thanksgiving, we'll end our class a little early today. My eldest daughter is home from college for the holiday, and this is a very big day in our house. I hope you'll all have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, what a catchy car. Wow, pipe the shake. <laughs> that coat cost $600 if it cost a nickel. And that roadster, I wonder what he paid for that. Don't you dare ask him. Yes, sir, Ernestine. Well, you can count on me to act civilized. If you marry him, none of us will ever have to work. Yeah, we'd all come and live with you. Who is it? It's Al Lynch, the Nantucket heartthrob. Oh. Mother, you said it was all right for me to invite him here for Thanksgiving. Yes, dear, I remember. Now, remember, boys, you all stand up when he comes in. Here he is. Quick, everybody, sit down. How can we stand up if we're not sitting down first? My Al Lynch, what a delightful surprise. Baby! Al, my old family, dear. Baby, whose pet are you wearing? Oh, no! Al, please. <gasps> no, Al. Okay. Did you get a load of the chariot? Cost 2,000 smackers. I hope that answers your question. Oh, it's beautiful, Al. How about taking a quick spin? Well, I want you to say hello to my family first. Oh, I've got plenty of time for that. I'm going to be here the whole weekend, ain't I? I'll just tell Mother. Sure. I'd like to meet your old lady. Get away from me. Mother, I'd like you to meet Al Lynch. Al, this is my mother. Your mother? I have sworn she was your sister. She looks just like your sister. I'd have sworn it. Ernestine, won't you be cold in that open car? Oh, it's all right, Mrs. G. She gets cold, I'll give her part of my coat. The sleeves. Oh, well. <laughs> well, be seizing you. And to think we're having a party tonight, and his honor. Lend her his sleeves. I'd like to lend him a swift kick in the pants. That's what Dad would have done. You don't really care for Morton Dykes. Why did you invite him? Why didn't you ask somebody else? Because there isn't anybody else I do care for. Yes. Hello. Wow, hello. We had the most divine spin in the roadster. For three hours, we ran out of gas. Oh, Ernestine. You didn't fall for that old chestnut. Oh, you're just... Believe me, Ernestine, I am not jealous. Not the slightest bit. You're not? Oh, you poor kid, you're frozen to death. Gonna take a hot bath right away. Fight on, for Fight, 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 fight. Now, just do what I told you. You go first, Bill. Yeah. Fight, 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 fight. Fight on for Gilbert. Fight right. on for Sagawan. Fight! Fight! Yeah, I thought I locked this door. No, that lock never worked. Nobody pays any attention to a thing like that in a big family. 
You mean one of the girls might walk in here, too? Oh, well, sure. But they probably wouldn't even look at you. Just walk right past. What? That's the way we were brought up. You weren't brought up, you were dragged up. That's very funny. Hey, close the door. Sure, but it won't keep anybody out. Fight on. Sag on. Fight. Sure it's out there? Sure. I threw it out and it didn't come down. Okay, I'll get it for you. So what are you doing? His brother's out there and I want to get it for him. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Oh, it isn't dangerous out here. There's a big red look. Give me that brush. I can't reach it. Sure. Gee, you got hair on your chest. You got more hair than Tom. takes that from who it comes. Exactly what happened. <laughs> Tom, hmm? you know everything that goes on in this house. What happened upstairs? Who was wearing his sister's dress? No, I forgot something. Tom, who was it? Sorry, Mrs. Gilbert, but I'm no informer. Did you have anything to do with insulting Al Lynch? Well, it took quite a bit of doing, but we managed it. Frank, Al Lynch was Ernestine's guest. Well, sure, Mother, that was the trouble. It wasn't up to you to judge him. The poor girl's heartbroken. Huh? She's in tears. He took his pin back. She's beside herself. Ernestine? Yes. Mother, come here. There's something I want you to see. Now, Mom, 
Mother, you'll just have to face it. From now on, there are certain things the men of the family will have to do for you. Yes, Frank. waiting here for just a moment? Why, no. Thank you. This is Dr. Gilbreth. I'm Kendall Williams, chairman of the Speaker's Committee. How do you do? Is something wrong? I'm terribly sorry that this is awfully embarrassing, but a dreadful mistake has been made. You see, one of the rules of the Engineers Club is that no women are allowed to enter it. Oh, surely you must be joking. I most certainly am not. I tried to call you at your home, but you'd already left. I'm terribly sorry. Would you mind telling me why I was invited in the first place? I read an article by L. M. Gilbert, and uh, I was very much impressed with it. I thought it would be interesting if L. M. Gilbert would speak to us. But, but you're a woman. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about that, Mr. Williams. After all, even engineering has its limits. Oh, here's a copy of the speech I was planning to give tonight. Perhaps your members would find it more enlightening if it were delivered by a man. Good night. mother was in an automobile accident and she was brought here. No, you can't speak to her now, but you'll be able to see her tomorrow morning at 10. Tomorrow morning at 10? Not before that. You're sure she's all right? Thank you. Thank what you. happened? Mother, she, she's been in an automobile accident. She's at Montclair Hospital. Is she all right? That's what they say, but I'm going to call Anne. I think she ought to come home from school. If she leaves tonight, she should be here by morning. Operator, operator, I want long distance. How long will I be here, Doctor? Until you get well. But I must know. I have all my children at home alone. I teach a class. And I have a lecture at Rutgers on Saturday. Well, I think you better plan to cancel everything for a while. But I can't. Mrs. Gilbreth, you drove your car into a parked truck, and it doesn't take a doctor to tell you. Anybody who does that needs a rest. Come in. Mother. Oh, oh mother. I'm so scared. Oh, oh, baby, honey, you come. Oh, it's so good. Baby, come Are you all right, Mother? I'm fine, dear. How are the other children? You couldn't bring them down, could you? No. No, they're not allowed in, but they're fine. Where's Frank? Uh, is she all right, Doctor? Well, yes, but she needs some rest. Plenty of it. The, the barber. That's right. You know each other? I almost gave them all a haircut once, but we couldn't quite agree on the price. Oh, really? Well, I'll send the nurse in to do something about the bars. Thank you.
Dear, just a little. Does it hurt, Mother? Now, don't cry. If the doctor hears you, he'll put you all out. Yes, Mother. None of you went to school today. You'll just have to go straight from here. I'd better write some excuses for you for being late. Don't no, bother, Mother. I have them right here. An original and eight carbon. Just sign the top one. I guess I don't have to worry about the house running smoothly, do I? No, Mother. Oh, my, another bouquet. I'll have to get another vase. By the way, Dr. Grayson saw you come in. He said to tell you to take the little ones out the way they came. Uh, yes, ma'am. And when you come tomorrow, be sure to use the back stairs again. Yes, ma'am. Now, that's enough for today. Better say goodbye. Tomorrow you can stay longer. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, dear. Be careful. You'll jiggle the bed. Your mother's in considerable pain. Not anymore, I'm not. Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, friend, dear. Let us see. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, friend. Oh, hello, girls. How's your mother? Well, the doctor says she's going to be fine, Mr. Harper. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Where is she? Uh, room 309. Thank you. Miss Gilbreth. Oh, yes, Doctor. I just wanted to reassure you about your mother's condition. All she needs is plenty of care, and I'll see that she gets it. Thank you, Doctor. Hope you'll come to see her every day. I think that'd do her a lot of good. Well, I won't be able to. I have to go back to college tomorrow. But I'll be back for Easter vacation. Good, good. Well, goodbye. Bye. Is mother going to be here until Easter? Of course not. Well, then I don't understand. It's all right, Ernestine. And the... And when that Kendall Williams person left me standing on the sidewalk in front of the Engineers Club, all dressed up with no dinner to go to, I was so furious, I guess I didn't watch where I was driving, and I ran into a parked truck. And here I am. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's positively ridiculous. Everybody in the country ought to know that Dr. L.M. Gilbreth is a woman, and a very remarkable one. Lily, what you need is some good publicity, and I'm going to see that you get it. How? Well, you remember the day I walked into your house and I told you my name was Sam Harper, and you said, uh, of Harper Electric. Right? Yes. And you just leave everything to me. Come on, hurry along, everybody. The news will be starting. Come on. Dr. Gilbreth, they used to live on our block. He was my mother glad when they moved away. <laughs>
poser? I think so. Oh, no, it isn't. Do you realize that that newsreel will be shown all over the United States? And Canada and the British Isles. Oh. I still say it's done good publicity. I know you keep saying that, but how could that be good publicity? I'll tell you. They mentioned your name, they spelled it correctly, they used your picture, and believe me, that's all that matters. Children, your mother is now a public figure. And so am I. That first day when we go back to school. I'm not going. I want to catch something that'll keep me in bed till June. What's the matter with all of you, anyway? Don't you realize you were in the same newsreel with the President of the United States? Yes, I thought he looked much funnier than we did, but nobody laughed at him. I don't care whether they laughed at you or not. They'll remember you. Isn't that right, Doc? Well, I don't see how they could forget. Ships that pass in the night. Yeah, east is east and west is west and so on and so forth. It's all a lifetime. You meet all kinds of people. So I guess you haven't really wasted your evening. No, I don't think I have. Well, see you tomorrow night. Say, I forgot to ask, are you free tomorrow night? Yes. Good. Good night. Good night. It's coming in on time. Be here any minute. Please, this is a railroad station. Exactly, people always kiss in railroad stations. But I'm not going any place, and neither are you. Shh, somebody might hear you. Stop it. I'm only trying to put you in a good mood so you look happy when we tell your mother about us. Bob, I suddenly think I should tell her myself. Don't make it sound so solemn. Well, I'm not, but suppose I break down and cry or something. I wouldn't want you there. Do you always cry when you're happy? Sometimes. You should have seen me when I was graduating from college. You'd have thought I was being flunked out. Why don't you come by the house at 5 o'clock? Okay, darling. Goodbye, darling. Have a nice trip, darling. Did you let you go? Oh, it was wonderful. I have the most marvelous news. How would you like to have a professor for a mother? No. Yes, you are now looking at Professor Lillian Gilbert of Purdue University. Purdue? Well, it's wonderful. Yes, if only it were near a Montclair. I hate leaving the children for so long. But now that you're home and can really take over for me, I think it'll work out all right. Oh, Porter, that's mine. That brown bag. Now, don't tell Sam Harper. It'll only make his head bigger. But you know, I think that silly newsreel helped. The dean told me he never laughed at anything so much in his life. <laughs> but he also read an article of mine last month and came to hear me lecture. Taxi lady? Yes, please. Taxi? The car broke down again. Oh. How's everything at home? Oh, just fine. 
Are you sure? Well, yes, Mother. Why should anything be wrong? Oh, I don't know, but when I'm away, I'm always afraid that something dreadful might happen. Oh, Mother. I know it's silly, but I'm never sure until I get back and look at every one of you. But I won't worry now so much that you're home. You'll never know what a comfort it is to me, Anne. Thank you, Mom. Thanks, Ben. Okay, Doc. Hi, Ann. Hello, Bob. How'd it go? I didn't tell her. Bob, do you think it's such a good idea? Come again? Well, taking on a wife and you're just starting practice. Don't you think it'd be better if we'd wait a while? No, I don't. Why do you want to wait? I just told you. No, you didn't tell me. This afternoon you weren't worried about the two of us pacing the world together. There's obviously another reason. All right, then. It isn't fair to them. To whom? To Mother and everyone else in the family. Oh, Bob, don't you see? I've had all the best of it. Now it's Ernestine's turn to go away to school, and someone ought to help Mother. I think I ought to. I mean... We could be engaged, but let's not get married for a while. How long a while? I don't know. A year? Two? I don't know. I've heard of families like this, but this is the first time I ever met one. Families like what? Oh, they raise the children and then use them. Never let them go. They turn them into a lot of assistant mothers and fathers, bringing home the paycheck. Taking care of the younger kids. My mother isn't like that at all. Well, maybe she isn't, but that's the way it comes out for you and me. It's wrong, Anne. It's wrong, and if you won't tell her, I will. No, Bob, no. Oh, won't you please wait? It won't work, Anne. We're too much in love. We should get married now and start out together. Now you know that. So let me tell her. I can't. Okay. So you can't. Please, Bob. I love you. Okay, so. okay, let's forget oh, it. Please, Bob. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Aren't you even going to come in? Oh, I. Better get back to the hospital. Will you call me? Oh, sure, sure. This strawberry's good. What flavor are you going to get? I'm going to get cherry. I want lemon. Look. McIntyre. This is Ernestine. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. That was Mrs. McIntyre. Mrs. Fox won't be able to come tonight, so I've been promoted to take charge of the refreshment booth. Zowie. Well, dear, you volunteered to help. Well, I only volunteered because no boy volunteered to take me to the dance. you were going to the dance. No, I'm not. Anne, is everything all right between you and Bob? Well, yes, of course. I don't like to be pokey, dear, but it seems to me I haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. Well, he's been working nights at the hospital. Two weeks in a row? That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Yes, it is. They're uh, shorthanded, I guess. Hello? Yes. No, you're calling. Hello? Oh, hello, Morton. This is 
Mrs. Ernestine. Oh, I'm fine. How are you? You want to talk to Anne? She's right. Well, I can talk to you just as well. Are you and Anne free tonight? Both of us, Morton. You mean Anne and me? Yes. I know it's the last minute in very bad form, but my cousin just got in from Atlanta. Only be here for a few days, and I wonder if we could all go out together. Oh, Morton, there's a dance in town tonight, and it's for a worthy cause. I, I promised to go and help out. Maybe we could all go. Wait just a minute, I'll ask Anne. Andy, Morton has his cousin from Georgia with him, and they want to take us to the dance tonight. How about it? Oh, Ern, I don't think so. I'm not up to it. Oh, I? please, Anne. If you don't go, I'll just be stuck behind the refreshment booth all night. Please, Anne, for my sake. Oh, all right. I guess so. Morton, she says she'd be delighted. See you at 8 o'clock. Oh, Lee, I got a million things to do. Anne, are you sure you want to go? Of course, why not? Oh, you were planning to go out with Mr. Harper tonight, weren't you? That's all right. It's Tom's night in. Oh. Oh, good evening, Sam. Good evening. For you, Professor. Thank you. Makes me feel as if I were going to a dance, too. Everybody going to a dance? Well, the older girls and Frank. Well, why don't we go, too? I feel great tonight, just like a kid. <laughs> ah, Lily, you look beautiful. Thank you. Uh, come into the living room. I, I want to talk to you. Uh, sit down. Uh, you know me, Lily. When I have anything to say, I say it straight out. Yes? Well, uh... What I was going to ask you... Excuse me, Sam. That must be someone calling for the girls. Oh, hello, boss. Good evening, Mrs. Gilbert. This is my cousin, Franklin Docks. How do you do? How do you do, ma'am? Won't you come in? Thank you. I'll tell the girls you're here. Oh, here they are. Hello, Morton. Good evening, Morton. Hello, Anne. Hi, Ernestine. I'd like to meet my cousin, Franklin Dykes. How do you do, Miss Anne? Well, I never expected to draw anything like you. Morton, I'm real obliged to but, you. But, Franklin... It's all right, Morton. When you come to Atlanta, I just hope I can repay your hospitality in kind. But I doubt it. Shall we go? Come on, Morton. Good night, Morton. Good night, dear. Don't you worry about a thing, Miss Gilbert. I'll take real good care of your daughter. Good night, Mel. Good night, sir. How do you do? I'm Mr. Beasley. I've come for Martha. Oh, won't you come in, Mr. Beasley? Thank you. I'll get her. Oh, Frank, will you tell Martha that Mr. Beasley's here? Martha, Bubber's here. Hi, Bubber. Hi, Frank. Mother, this tie, I can't get it straight. Yes, dear, I'll try to fix it. Well, what's going on? I'll only be a minute, Sam. Oh, uh, I'd like to present Mr. Beasley, Mr. Harper. How do you do, Mr. Beasley? Good evening, everyone. Hello, Bubber. Hello, Martha. It was so kind of you to ask me to the dance. Well, that's okay. Frank's taking my kid sister. Come on, let's go. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Beasley. Goodbye, Mrs. Gilbert. Goodbye, Mr. Beasley. Thanks, Mother. So long, everybody. Goodbye, dear. Was that Martha? Yes, she'd been practicing all day how not to be an old maid. <laughs> Won't you please sit down, Lily? Yes, Sam. You know, Lily, I'm pretty well fixed financially, and I've got a lot of power. But there's only one thing that gives me a real kick these days. Isn't there somebody else in the house that can answer that? No, Sam. I'm not very well fixed financially. Good evening, Miss Gilbert. Good evening, Bob. Uh, may I see Anne, please? I'm afraid not. She's gone out. With Ernestine. Oh. Do you mind if I wait? Of course not. But it might be a while. I'll wait. 
You know Mr. Harper. Sure. Hello, Mr. Harper. Uh, hello. Is he going to stay here? Why don't we go out someplace, then? Oh, no, I don't think so. Thanks, anyway. Is there something on your mind, Bob? What? She asked if there was something on your mind. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry, but it's just that I have so much on my mind. I see. You do? I'm leaving for Detroit. That appointment at the Detroit General Hospital? Yes, it came through, and I have to leave immediately, tonight. That's why I wanted to see Anne. Yes, but Anne went out dancing. She won't be home. Dancing? I thought you said she went out with Ernestine. It was a double date. She just did it to help Ernestine out, so that Ernestine would have an escort. Oh, so now she's helping Ernestine. Well, the last time I talked to her, she was helping you. I suppose a year from now, she'll be helping Martha or Frank or somebody else. Is she ever going to do anything for herself? What on earth are you talking about? It's ridiculous. It's perfectly ridiculous. I came here to tell her that it's all right. I'll wait for her. If I was just going soft-headed. This isn't a family. Most families only have two hands to hold you with. This is an octopus holding on with every tentacle. Maybe Anne is willing to waste her life, but I'm not. Goodbye, Mrs. Gilbreth. Goodbye, Mr. Harper. What the was that all about? I'm not sure, but I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> Too, but all she ever had was little old me. Gee, I hope nobody else cuts in on us. Me too. You know, Martha, when Frank said he'd take my sister to the dance, if I'd take you, I thought it was going to be a terrible night. But it isn't. It's swell. Oh, it's swell for me, too, Papa. Why, up to tonight, I always wanted to be a boy. Thank you. Thank you, Morton. If you don't mind, I think I'd like to sit down. Oh, sure. <laughs> Can I get you some punch? No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. We will now have the first event in our dance contest, the Shag. Choose your partners for the Shag contest. And would you like Come to... on, Ann. I'll show you how to do it in Georgia. Would you like to enter the contest? No, thank you, Morton. You'll just learn with me. You sure you don't want to? Well, all right. The worst they can do is put us out. She's in a contest. A contest? But I have to talk to her. Wait, I think one of the judges is putting her out now. Oh, dear. Just a minute, Lily. Thank you. Well, Ann, 
your mother wants to talk to you. She's over there by the refreshment booth. Well, I protest. This is a bust dance contest I ever lost in my whole life. Well, you were doing the southern version. It's not allowed in New Jersey. Mother, what is it? Come out here, Anne. I've got to talk to you. A message for you from Bob. Did he call? No, he came by and told me to tell you he's leaving tonight for Detroit. He got that appointment. Oh, no. Will you please tell me what happened between you two? What's this business about your telling him you have to wait? Why do you have to wait? And why is the Gilbert family an octopus? Did Bob say that? Yes. Well, Mother, it's just that you have this wonderful opportunity to go to Purdue, and I ought to stay home so the others can have the chance I've had. Oh. And how long do you figure that will take? I don't know. A year, two? Why not 15 or even 20? By that time, we might have Jane married off. Or maybe she'll decide never to get married. And you'll both be old maids and live with me forever. Is that why I've kept this family together? So that I can have spinster daughters around the house? Is that why? No. Is that a question or an answer? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. What I've been working for and hoping for and praying for is to have someone like Bob love you and marry you. Oh, Mother. Now get down to that hospital and catch him before he gets away. Bob. Listen, you. Both of you. I'm not going to Detroit alone. I'm not going to let Anne sacrifice herself. Mrs. Gilbert, you just have to figure out some way to get along without her. I can. You can. You're darn right I can. Well, what are you waiting for? There she is. Take her. Everything's going to be all right, Sam. No, I'm glad that's settled. Now, Lily, Mr. Gilbert, uh, have you seen Anne anywhere? I've been hunting high and low. I have terrible news for you, young man. She just left for Detroit. Detroit? But that's in Michigan. <laughs> There's a man knows his geography. <laughs> Lily, let's you and I find some place that's quiet. I have something I want to say to you. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, will you please get your partners for the waltz contest? Oh, Sam, I feel like dancing. Let's enter. All right, if that's what you want. I felt like such a kid when I came to see you tonight. Lily, do you have many days like this? All the time. Pretty crowded life. You haven't very much room in it for uh, anything else, have you? No, Sam. I guess I have. Well, here we are. Yes. Oh, don't bother to get out, Sam. Thank you, Lily. Oh, Lily, uh, and keep this in memory of Sam Harper, the fellow you won a dance contest with. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you for everything. Good grief. Are those kids working in the chemical laboratory at this hour? I don't know. I'd better go and find out. Good night, Sam. Good night, Lily. Good night. Home, Mr. Harper? Please. I, I sure I had that receipt right this time. Tom, you're absolutely incorrigible. Janie. <laughs> Did that noise wake you up? No. Well, then why are you crying? I just want to drink water. It's Jane Gilbert.
Congratulations, Jane. Thank you. You're a great one, I must say. You work hard your whole life to send your children through college. And then when that final great moment arrives, you go to sleep. I wasn't asleep, dear. I was just thinking of someone who loved us all very much and saying thank you. <laughs> 